Today, I want to talk about the new Hulu series, A Murder of the End of the World, and how it might connect to the Netflix series, The OA. I have a cold right now, so sorry if my voice sounds funny. Both shows were created by the duo Brit Marling and Zalbat Manglish, with Brit Marling also starring as a lead character in most of their collaborations. The OA was a series that was meant to run for five seasons on Netflix, but only ended up getting two seasons before its cancellation. A Murder at the End of the World, however, is a mini-series with a single run of seven episodes that many fans speculate to take place in season three or four of the OA Netflix series timeline, but let's break down exactly why that is. The OA was the story of a woman traveling from one dimension to another at the end of each season of this show, with each season taking place in its own dimension. Season 1 took place in the first dimension and focused on building up a series of movements that, when used, are said to open a portal to another world. At the end of Season 1, these are used to send its main character, who calls herself the OA, to an alternate reality. This is a second dimension explored throughout Season 2 that takes place in a world very similar to Season 1, but with a split in the timeline when the OA was a child, leading to different outcomes later in their life. Season 2, however, ended with OA jumping to a third dimension, into the body of actress and writer Britt Marling, on the actual set of the OA Netflix series. Previously, we were led to believe that all realities would be splits in a timeline such as with Dimensions 1 and 2, but from Dimension 3, it would look like Britt Marling is actually an enlightened being who has used the powers of fantasy to bring her creations into her reality by imagining them as having tools that allow them to travel to higher dimensions. But where would the show have gone from here? As mentioned, the show is said to have five seasons needed to tell its story. Something confirmed in interviews, but was also obvious in the show itself, with there always being groups of five, or groups of four, with a fifth bigger person above them. This starts with Owe and the three Haptives, with the fifth person being Hap looking over them. When Renata joins their group, they become five on their own, with Owe being the fifth bigger person overwatching them. In Crestwood, there were four high school boys, and their teacher, BBA, was the fifth bigger person watching over them. In the season 2 finale, we saw that season 3 would take place in a world that looks like our own, with OA being just a TV series in this dimension that Britt Marling is making. So what exactly would have happened in dimensions 4 and 5? The key to solving the OA was to understand that the story is a loop and a palindrome. This is proved by the title of the show, where the O represents a loop and the A represents the palindrome, with the first half of the A mirroring the second half. This was further proved by the theme song of the OA, famous for being played by OA on her violin and again in the cafeteria when the Crestwood Five perform the five movements. When played backwards, this song is exactly the same, only having a different shift in tone from start to finish, making it a musical palindrome, with the second half of the song just being the first half of the song played in reverse. The final piece of evidence proving this is the house on Knob Hill from season 2, well known to be a metaphor for the show itself, a puzzle that the creator creators want us to solve. This house has five challenges, each representing one of the five seasons. The first is a room so dark that the only way out is to feel the wall to discover a staircase, the same way that the OA was blind in the story she told in season one. Challenge two is a puzzle on the floor which represents the house itself, it being just one giant puzzle. The third challenge was to find the hidden door under a bed, which Kareem found after having a dream on the bed. This represents how in the middle of the story, in the middle of this five-season palindrome, OA travels to the body of Britt Marling, the highest point in the story, the very middle of the A, where she realizes the only way forward is to go back down into a lower dimension, another fictional TV or movie dimension like seasons 1 and 2 of the OA were in her reality. This fourth season slash dimension is where the story of A Murder at the End of the World would fit perfectly in. The fourth challenge in the house on Knob Hill was a maze of mirrors, representing how this side of the dimensional curve would begin to mirror the first half, with season 4 mirroring season 2, and season 5 mirroring season 1. But finally, the last puzzle in the house on Knob Hill, the fifth challenge, is just a dead end, with the T.S. Eliot quote, the end of all exploring will be to go back to the beginning and know the place for the first time. This teaches Kareem that if he goes back to the very beginning of the house, there is a secret path directly to the attic. But it was only by solving all of the puzzles of the house that Kareem was able to understand that logic when presented with the quote. 
This is meant to symbolize how Season 5 will not just be a return to Dimension 1, but a return to the past of Dimension 1, to see the true version of the story that Oe told us in Season 1, and explain why she told particular lies. Now, A Murder at the End of the World stars a new character named Darby, who is suspiciously like a young Brit Marling. Darby is a young amateur sleuth and hacker who has been invited to an elite getaway by a billionaire who looks suspiciously like Hap from the OA. Marling appears in the series not as the main character, but as Lee Anderson, the wife of Andy Ronson, that suspicious hap-looking character. Now, as theorized, the show as a potential fourth season of the OA mirrors season two of the OA quite a bit. That season focused heavily on an investigation and detective work, particularly through the character of Kareem, with OA getting wrapped up in the investigation as well, just as Darby seems to be getting involved with the investigation at this weird resort. As of episode 3 of A Murder at the End of the World, my theory is that Britt Marling's character Lee Anderson represents her season 3 self in the OA, and that her arc across the 7 episodes of A Murder at the End of the World will vaguely resemble what she was going through in season 3 of the series. This is why she is married to this hap-looking character, because in season 3 of the OA, Britt Marling was married to Jason Isaacs, the actor who played Hap within the show. Darby thus is meant to represent the key story of season 4 as an independent narrative. Within the world of the OA, A Murder at the End of the World would be a show that Dimension 3's Britt Marling produces perhaps after OA leaves her body to travel to Dimension 4. Without Jason Isaacs around to play the part for whatever reason, perhaps this would be Marling's only way to finish telling the story that happened in the OA within the show. This would explain why Darby's love interest looks so much like Homer, with this shot of him at the dinner table looking very similar to the shots of Homer at a restaurant on an island near the end of OA's story in Season 1. Each season of the OA was represented by one of the Haptives, with Rachel representing Dimension 1, Homer Dimension 2 with him even getting the second movement, and Scott representing Dimension 3 with the third movement. Renata thus, with her learning the fourth movement and coming in so late, represents the story of Season 4, with the idea of it taking place on an island of sorts like Iceland also being something Hap suggests to OA during her story, suggesting they take the healing movements they have to an island where they help the rich. So what does this say for where a murder at the end of the world will go? A lot of evidence in the OA pointing to aliens eventually being important in the story, particularly in Season 4, such as OA's adoptive mother putting up an article about mysterious UFOs on a theory board about OA's disappearance in the very first episode. Season 2 is supposed to mirror Season 4 and showcased a very important scene where OA puts on a red dress with a UFO on it, before talking to the very alien-like giant octopus, Old Knight. This was exactly halfway through Season 2, with the halfway point of each season giving us a flash-forward of the season to come. And while the original flash-forward was actually a glimpse to Season 3 where Oe sees herself as Britt Marling, the fact that she's in such an alien-themed scene between her dress and the giant octopus before having this glimpse says that they are also foreshadowing a future event to me with that. This is further hinted at with the quote from before, the end of all exploring will be to go back to the beginning and know the place for the first time. While this represents how Season 5 will be a prequel of sorts, it also means Season 4 will be the end of the actual story, and it will go back to the beginning so to speak, with many fans suggesting that this also refers to the beginning of Britt Marling and Zalbot Manglige's collaborations together. This would be the thesis film that Zal wrote and directed called The Recordus. This presents itself as a drama for 90% of its story, being about a girl who just wants to write the perfect song so she can get accepted to a New York music program. Along the way, she tortures herself, but it also seems worth it to achieve the supposed calling that she feels. She also happens to meet a conspiracy theorist who suggests that she is an alien technology sent to watch humans, and witness major events for the aliens to see for themselves. This is proven true at the end when she flies to New York, and we see that she is on one of the flights that crashed into the Twin Towers on 9-11. This idea of a recording human is an ancient aliens theory that is largely inspired by the Book of Enoch, where fallen angel figures known as the Watchers were sent down to watch humans and to judge them at the end of times. The OA is of course said to be the original angel, and by season 4 of the show, it seems that OA was planning to draw a connection between the angels known as the Watchers from the Book of Enoch and the alien implanted humans recording humanity. That would mean that a murder at the end of the world could be working into a big story about aliens, something that would make sense closer to the Arctic, with our polar zones being considered important to alien conspiracy theorists. The real question, however, is what exactly this murder at the end of the world is really about, not just the end of the world as in the end of our polar north. 
The story of the Oe took many mythological interpretations that we have already discussed quite a bit in this video, but its key theme was Gnosticism, particularly the story surrounding Sophia. For those who don't know, the Gnostic tales of Sophia were stories that floated around in the early centuries of Christianity, which depicted Jesus as a divine being who has come to rescue the spirit of Sophia. In each text, it's a bit different, but they all reflect the same idea that Sophia was a divine spirit herself who became shattered and locked in human flesh, with the primary teachings of these Gnostic texts being about freeing your divine spark by finding a way to escape the cycle of reincarnation through enlightenment. The OA is presented as Sophia, each dimension having a shattered piece of her that she is making whole by traveling across the four dimensions, to become a fifth bigger version of herself when she returns to dimension one in season five. This is modeled after the dimensions of Jewish Kabbalah, with the first dimension being the only physical world, and the other three being more spiritual, ethereal realms that Oe experiences in seasons two, three, and four. The fifth dimension in Jewish Kabbalah is theoretical. It's an idea that all four of these dimensions proceed from one source, or that you can imagine the fifth dimension as all four dimensions combined. This would make season five a prequel that only makes sense with the other four seasons before it. This is because when we go back to dimension one, we'd see that Oe's friends are not real. They are imaginary voices in her head that started to appear again just like they did when she was a child when she stopped taking her medication as Hap suggested to her before letting her move in with him. With her being blind, she thought that the voices she heard as a child were real people who just couldn't come into her room, thus explaining why she couldn't touch them. With her being in a spare room that Hap had promised Oe, the voices would rationalize that they were all his prisoners in separate cells, hence why they couldn't touch each other, but why they could hear each other. In order to become this complete fifth version of herself, however, it would seem that Oe would have to have all of her shattered lights restored, indicating she may have experienced a great death in season four. Now, Sophia is often seen as the more victimized side of the Jesus figure, the part of divinity that fell into creation by accident that Jesus had to come save, with Jesus and Sophia being seen as sort of divine opposites. As such, in the Gnostic text, the Gospel of Judas, Sophia doesn't appear at all, and instead, it is clarified that Judas Judas knew he would kill Jesus, and in fact, that Jesus needed Judas to do so to release him from his flesh. This is implied to be so he can become the lamb described in Revelations, who sets forth the apocalypse from the higher realm. This is an interesting parallel to the original fallen angels myths of Enoch, who were said to be thrown into the earth until the end of days, only to be let out so they can see the extermination of their descendants. These fallen angels and their descendants were watchers, who were said to watch over humanity to judge them at the end times originally. These different various mythic stories all allude to the idea of a fallen figure whose final death unleashes something apocalyptic. And while a murder at the end of the world appears to just be a detective drama at the moment, I imagine that like with Zal and Brit's previous works, it will start to get a lot more crazy in sci-fi towards the end. For now, these are my theories on how the OA might connect to a murder at the end of the world, but take them with a grain of salt as they really might end up just going in their own direction with all of this, and I may be getting some things right and other things wrong. Subscribe for more videos every week or two as enough development happens for me to comment on it, and leave your comments down below letting me know any theories or topics you want me to cover for the show. And for those who are a bit confused about the breakdown of the OA still, consider checking out my previous video where I go into a lot more detail on what would have happened in seasons 3 four, and five of the original series. See you guys next time.